Hi, I'm Mike Bellevue, and we're here at the West Shore Sportsman's Association. And today I'm going to be testing the combat efficiency of the brown bass musket using buck and ball paper cartridges. Now, whenever I do something with uh, a musket or any smoothbore, I always get multiple comments asking me to do buck and ball. And um, for years, <laughs> I've I've resisted your entreaties to do that. And the reason is pretty simple. Every time I've done buck and ball, I have been underwhelmed by the results, uh, at least in terms of making a good video. Because the, the problem is I have always shot at individual targets. And I'll tell you, if you're using a buck and ball load and you shoot at an individual target, unless you're a very bad shot, you're going to hit it. <laughs> you're always going to hit it. And generally, you'll put multiple rounds in one target, but, uh, you know, not all of them usually. And so what? You can do the same thing with a single musket ball. It really doesn't tell you anything. So I kind of racked my brains to come up with an effective way of testing buck and ball loads uh, and the way they would have been used in the 18th century. So, if you're not familiar with what buck and ball looks like, this is one of the cartridges right here. And if you want to know how they're made, I recommend you look at the previous video, and I'll put a link to that down below in the description area, that uh, will tell you exactly how I make them. Okay, so, so you'll know how to make them, and now you're going to know how to shoot them. So, I, I've got to tell you, by the way, I'm here at the gun club, for a very specific reason. Uh, and I wish I wasn't, because this is a very complex test and it's going to be hard to do with other people around if I have to share the range. Right now I've got this range to myself, but I'm not the only one at the club. And this is a, a big club with over 2,000 you know, family members. Uh, I mean, over 3,000 individual members. So, it's going to be hard to keep this alone. But the reason I've got to keep it alone, at least for specific ranges, is going to become obvious. Because I came up with a test, and you can see it behind me. And we'll go take a closer look at it. But basically, it's an array of seven full-size silhouette targets. And five of them are numbered. The two on each end, or the one on each end, two targets are not numbered. I'm going to shoot the five inside targets each with one buck and ball load. So that's going to be five musket balls downrange and 15 buckshots downrange. And then we're going to go see how we did. Now I'm not shooting the outside targets because I want to see if they pick up any hits that have spread out from the guys in the center. Because obviously the reason you're using the buckshot is because it'll spread. Right? We're throwing up a big sheet of lead. So this is going to be like five men firing a volley at a line of seven, seven men coming towards us. Now my original plan was to have nine targets up, uh, but I simply couldn't get the space on the target stands to do that. And, and that's the reason we're here at West Shore, and you'll hear more shooting. Right? We're here because they use the type of wooden target stands, bases, that will hold multiple uprights uh, so I can line them up. So I'm using two target bases just to get the seven targets up. And uh, I would have had to have hauled another base out of storage to get up nine. I think we'll, we'll do with just the one outlier on each side. We'll still have a good test. Okay, so this is, like I say, pretty, pretty complex. We're set up at 25 yards right now. I'm going to try to shoot that, then shoot it again at 50, and then shoot it again at 100 yards and see how we do. But that's going to depend on whether or not uh, I've got the range. It's going to be a little bit dicey. So let's go take a closer look at that target array, and um, then we'll get loaded up and we'll start shooting. All right, here's a closer look at the target array. Now I'm only going to be shooting the five numbered targets. And then we're going to see if the two outlier targets pick up any hits as well. Okay, I just filed a fouling shot because this gun, I've noticed, has a tendency to throw the first shot real low from a clean bore. 
Uh, so now it's fouled and I'm going to load it up. So let me show you the loading technique. I'm going to reach into my cartridge box and I'm going to pull out a cartridge. Bite off the end. This is why, uh, by the way, British soldiers had to have two teeth, uh, two teeth in front that met. I'm going to put a frizzen stall on my frizzen, also called a frizzen guard. That's just a little safety device because in the 18th century they primed first right out of the same powder that's in the cartridge. So this is 1.5F musket powder that I'm putting in there. Now I'm going to take the rest of the powder and I'm going to pour it straight down the bore. Get it all in. Now the rest of the cartridge, the paper, the ball, and the buckshot all goes in as a unit. And the paper is going to act as a wadding and to some degree like a patch. So I'm going to get it down on the powder. Now we're loaded up primed and ready to go. So let's start the battle of the buckshot. Okay, I'm loaded up with buck and ball. I'm going to shoot the five numbered targets and we'll see how we do. Three. Four. Five. All right. Well, let's go see how we did. <laughs> like I say, this barrel is red hot right now. Well, at 25 yards, every target looks like this. Each opposing soldier Got hit with one musket ball and with two buckshots. Nothing, nothing in either of the outliers. So at this range, 25 yards, buck and ball is like a waste of time because the ball is going to do all the work you need. All right, just to make it more clear, here's what it looked like at 25 yards. I've marked the uh, buckshot with small orange dots and the musket balls with big ones. Now we can see. So I could have shot better, but everybody's dead. Mm. Well, even though, even though it's only late May, <laughs> we're having our first heat wave, and the temperatures are running about 20 degrees above normal, and the dew point is in the low 70s. So, 92 degrees, ultra muggy. <laughs> right now, the best piece of 18th century gear I've got is my bandana for wiping the sweat off me. So, I guess we're putting it to a real test because this is kind of Battle of Monmouth Courthouse type weather. And if you're not familiar with that battle, look it up. Okay, I cleaned the brown bass. I took a fouling shot. That may seem counterintuitive, but I want to have the same conditions for each each range we're firing at. Uh, I'm loaded up with buck and ball and I'm ready to go with 50 yards. So let's see how it does. Five. 
All right, well, we shot at 50 yards. Let's go see how many of them we killed. Okay, well at 50 yards, we're getting some spread on that buckshot and it is making a difference. For instance, my outside target that I didn't shoot at picked up a buckshot pretty close to the heart. So we got him without even trying. But I am finding that I'm not as accurate with this load as I am shooting the regular musket load. So this guy picked up a buckshot over there and he would have gotten missed except the ball caught him in the hip and the fellow next to him the ball also caught him in the, in the hip but he picked up two buckshot in the chest and then the number three man got a hip shot got a side shot from the one next to him picked up two buckshot in the arm one on the shoulder definitely in bad shape this guy got missed by the big balls, number four, but he picked up a shoulder hit, a miss, jugular hit, hit towards the heart, and a hit in the abdomen. So he's in bad shape. Number five had his shoulder blown out by a musket ball. Picked up a hit just about in the heart, certainly in the lungs, from a buckshot. And our last guy, who was not shot at, got off scot-free. So, we got seven men up here, took five shots, and hit six of them with, with killing shots. So, and that is pretty effective. Probably more effective, well obviously, one person down more effective than it would have been with just a round ball. But I'm not getting the kind of accuracy out of this that I get just out of my musket balls. So maybe something to consider, maybe not, since this is really designed for volley fire. All right, it's time for the final test. I've got the target array set up at 100 yards. And I'm going to load up with buck and ball. I've already cleaned the gun and I have fired a fouling shot, so we're good to go. So I gotta get my ear protection on. Um, gonna load up with buck and ball and make it happen. One. Two. Three. Four. That's five. This barrel is absolutely too hot for me to touch without burning myself. Well, that's five buck and ball at 100 yards. Let's go down there and see how we did. All right, let's see how we're doing. So the first guy, the outlier, he got hit with a buckshot and with a ball. Now, I've noticed that these buck and ball loads are throwing significantly to the right. Maybe it's me. Maybe it's the load. I don't know. Uh, it is very hot and humid, so it's tiring to shoot. That could have an effect, but they've definitely been thrown to the right. So I missed with the musket ball, killing shot with a buckshot. The guy who was aimed at, at 100 yards, is perfectly safe. So he lives. This guy picked up a musket ball in the lung, a collarbone shot. So he's dead. Guy number three picked up buckshot in the arm, abdomen shot with the ball. He's dead. Guy number four looks like he survived. Nope, nope, he did not. He's got a buckshot right down there in the guts, in the intestine and he is going to be in bad shape. 
And he also got a near miss buckshot down around his hip. Guy number five, how are you looking? Not good. Buckshot in the shoulder, which is good enough to take him out. Not sure what happened over there. Okay, out with a buckshot. And our last guy, who was not aimed at, took a uh, musket ball through the arm. Might have nicked his ribs, but at least through the arm, he is incapacitated. Well, I missed something on our old friend number four when I was by him before. I got the uh, intestine shot, but I missed the fact that we also took his hip out with a musket ball. So he would have been in very bad shape. So how effective is buck and ball? Well, I'm not loving it. But I'll tell you what, I would not want to have volley fire against me shooting it because it's thrown up a screen of lead. And if there's a second rank behind these guys, I'm sure they're picking up some of the misses from this first round. So that's what buck and ball does. And at 100 yards, that buckshot is spreading all over the place, totally uncontrolled. But if you're firing at a mass of troops, something's going to get hit. If you hear an airplane, there's been one circling overhead that I just can't get rid of. So I'm just going to film this and hope he doesn't, he doesn't pop up too much. Uh, now that I finished the test with buck and ball, I'd like to share my, just my final observations on it. Uh, first of all, I didn't fall in love with buck and ball during this test. And I guess that's because I'm too much of a rifleman and I like to hit what I aim at. And I found buck and ball to be fairly inaccurate. However, there is no doubt that if I was in the line of battle in a stand-up fight like, um, say, the Battle of Brandywine or Monmouth Courthouse, knowing that I'm going to be standing with my compadres, throwing that wall of lead downrange is very comforting. And I think this is an incredibly effective load for mass volley fire because you are throwing just a phenomenal amount of lead downrange, you're going to take something out, if not in the first rank, <laughs> in the second rank. Uh, so, by that nature, it is a very effective uh, combat cartridge for the 18th century. And I can see why Washington liked it so much, that he made it the standard cartridge for the American Army during the war. I'm going to try to wrap this up because I actually got through the whole test without sharing the range with anybody and cars are now pulling up which shows the wisdom of me getting here at 7 a.m. to set up uh, ready for 8 a.m. shoot time. So before I get people invading here as I say I'm unloading their cars let me just say uh, if you like this content give it a thumbs up it helps the algorithm YouTube has been kind of shadow banning me on a lot of stuff lately. Uh, they've been demonetizing me on a lot of stuff uh, that's 18th century. I mean, you'd never think that that they uh, would equate it to, you know, modern, uh, modern weapons, but they do. Uh, and that's just the way it is. So hopefully you get to see this. If you see it, you like it. If you like it and you don't subscribe, uh, please do. It, uh, it's a big help to us, helps us with the algorithm. And um, if you want to support us on Patreon, I'll provide a link down below. That's always helpful. But if you can't or don't want to, that is fine. We'd just like you to see the videos. So I hope you enjoyed this. Uh, to me, this is kind of experimental archaeology, and I find it fascinating. And as long as you guys do as well, I'll keep doing stuff like this. So. Until next week, bye.